The First Republic Bank has become the second largest bank failure in U.S. history. Regulators seized First Republic Bank Monday and sold it to J.P. Morgan Chase. Wait a second. Didn't we have one of the largest bank failures in recent history just a few weeks ago? Federal regulators shockingly shuttered Silicon Valley Bank Friday. It's not just the banks that are failing. Here's how 2023 started. Now to that announcement from Google this morning. The tech giant planning to slash 12,000 jobs. There's a new round of tech layoffs. Amazon will lay off 18,000 workers. I know that it all sounds catastrophic, but here's how we started last year. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies have taken a nosedive. About $8 billion vanished. In the day's other news, a sell-off hit Wall Street as big tech stocks fell sharply. Cryptocurrencies crushed one by one. Tech companies witnessed their stocks plummet. The stock market was on the brink of catastrophe, and investors were panicking and massively selling their stocks. On top of that, house prices are coming down. The housing bubble seems like it's about to burst. And now in 2023, banks are crashing one by one. First, it was SVB. And they told us that it's just one bank and the financial system is stable. Americans can have confidence that the banking system is safe. We can trust the banks, but here is another bank failure. No one wants to admit that we are on the brink of catastrophe. It might easily turn into a depression. The coming recession isn't just another recession. It's not just another crisis. It might be the biggest financial crash of our generation. We might witness the largest wealth transfer of our lives. Trillions of dollars will change hands. So how do you take advantage out of this crisis? How do you profit from the next recession? Here's your step-by-step -step guide to get rich using the next recession. We're, we're sort of at the beginning of what is going to be the most anticipated recession in probably modern history, everyone. The fears this morning over the new recession forecast, chances hitting 100%. A number of forces are putting pressure on the economy right now, and that has Wall Street betting on a recession sometime in the next 12 to 18 months. Until January 2022, everything was fine. Even though that the stock market stopped growing, things were relatively stable. However, the big guys at the top who understand how the market works knew that the storm was coming. So they started massively selling stocks. In 2020 alone, while everyone was buying Amazon stocks, Jeff Bezos was out there cashing out. He sold more than $10 billion worth of Amazon shares. The next year, in 2021, he sold another $10 billion worth of Amazon shares. But what about Elon Musk? Well, people like Kathy Woods were screaming on the internet that it was time to buy Tesla shares when it was at its peak. Guess what Elon Musk was doing? He was selling. He has sold almost $40 billion worth of Tesla shares in 2020 and 2021. Now, everyone is left with tons of Tesla shares that are down by more than 50%, but Elon Musk is sitting on $40 billion worth of cash. But how did these people know that a recession was on the way and the stock market would crash? Money has a time value. The sooner you get it, the more valuable it is. $100 million is worth a lot more today than 10 years from now, because you can invest it and get a 5 or 10% interest. But how do you determine how valuable the money you receive today is? There is a simple formula known as the discounted cash flow. We have discussed it in previous videos, but the point is that when the Fed lowers the rates, the future cash flow becomes more valuable. Lower rates means that high inflation, which decreases the value of your cash today. However, when the Fed raises the rates, the cash you have today will become more valuable than the cash you earn in the future. So, when Elon Musk claims that Tesla will make $100 billion 10 years from now, that $100 billion becomes less valuable the higher the Fed raises the rates. That is why tech stocks crashed last year when the Fed began hiking the rates. Anyone with a simple understanding of economics knew that zero rates for two straight years and the use of printing press would create massive inflation that the Fed would have to solve by radically raising the rates. It won't just crush the stock market, but also create massive layoffs, bank failures, and a potentially a housing crash. This is not the first recession that we're experiencing. The 2008 financial crisis was way worse than you might think. As the Fed did not act as fast as it did in 2020 by instantly lowering the rates and pumping cash into the economy, the crisis resulted in the loss of 18 
trillion dollars and led to some of the largest bankruptcies in the history of the United States. The unemployment rate in the US peaked at 10% and millions of people worldwide lost their jobs. Home prices lost as much as 30% of their value and governments across the globe had to print money to stop their economies from further droning into the crisis. However, in the midst of this crisis, there were people who managed to make billions of dollars. John Paulson, for example, made billions of dollars by betting against the housing market. Or Warren Buffett, who massively began buying undervalued stocks that made him billions of dollars. Or Michael Burry, who got famous by predicting the crash in the first place and putting everything he had against the housing market. These are just some of the famous examples. There's so many people who jumped in and purchased houses at a fraction of their value that today worth twice as much. So how can you get rich using the recession? Recession seems like the worst time to start a business. However, facts on the ground prove the absolute opposite. When the economy is growing, competing with top players is difficult, if not impossible. However, during crises when huge corporations are distracted by the bureaucracy they have, startups have the opportunity to strike. WhatsApp, for example, was founded in 2009 when the economy was crippled by the crisis. A few years later, Facebook acquired WhatsApp for $19 billion. And today, with over 2 billion users, it's worth a lot more. Uber is another example. It was founded back in 2009 during the Great Recession, and today it's worth dozens of billions of dollars. There are plenty of other examples, but it's not just about starting a business. A recession is a period to boost your career. Taking responsibility during turmoil will give you an upper hand over your colleagues, and you can climb the career ladder much faster in a relatively short period of time. Just take a look at how many CEOs lost their jobs to their junior managers during the last crisis. Number two, don't cash out. It's easy to be patient when everything is growing. The challenge is to be patient when everything is crushing, when you have to wait until the storm passes. A lot of people don't get patient and sell off thinking that the world is about to end. If it's a great company, if it's a great asset, it is going to lose some of its value since investors are scared to throw their money into the stock market. But sooner or later, its price is going to come back to its true value. 2022 was the year when everything crashed, since investors didn't know how much of an impact hiking the rates would have on the market. That is why even great stocks dropped significantly in value. But fast forward to 2023, some of them already back to how much they used to worth in 2021. Number 3. Build a cash cushion This is by far the best way to get rich during a recession. An economic crisis is a period of turmoil. It's the time when cash on the table matters the most. When business is growing, not many care about cash because the economy is filled with it. People invest in risky assets without being concerned about the consequences. Cashless businesses were thriving when interest rates were down, like crypto or tech companies. But the moment the Fed raised the rates, they collapsed. This is the time to jump in and buy these businesses at a fraction of their cost. Of course, not every one of them is worth your money, but even the good businesses with bright futures will see their value plummet since the storm is going to hit everyone. These are just some of the ways to get yourself ready for the next crisis. But at the end of the day, you have to consider your own needs and circumstances. Some people have huge cash flow coming in, so saving that cash and patiently waiting for that opportunity might be the way to go. For others, it might be some other way. I hope you enjoyed this video and most importantly found it helpful. Give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.